If one in the association organization is... Well, see, the association organization, uh, the, the organization that's given rights for the government to speak, see, that don't have anything to do with his heart. See? Now, if he is a real believer and born to the Spirit of God, sometime or other he's going to be checked. It can't be so plain and then him not see it. Now, you, uh, see, you want to remember this, friend, that God, God never does, it has at any time, as I can remember, see? But what, look, Jesus was the, was the keynote of all of it, because he was God, Emmanuel, made flesh. Now, look at this, this fellow, Jesus. When, did you know when he come on earth, there was an, I guess, one-tenth of the world know he was here? You know when that forerunner come, when all the mountains and things that take place, there wasn't one hundredth of the population of Israel, I guess, ever known. Isn't that strange? Why, there were Jews and things and people all over the world. I remember Jesus came to be a witness as the Savior of the world. Is that right? Well, there were just people after people after people after races after people that never even know nothing about it. Went right on just like the world know nothing about it. But all the time that was going on in the world. Amen. See? Why didn't he let them know? He came and the ones that were predestinated to eternal life was the ones that received him. It had been no good to say anything to the rest of them because he could not have redeemed them because it wasn't even redeemable. Why was it when those priests stood there, when he had to come to that spot, because the predestinated was plotted out in there, all around. So he had to preach to them as a group. And the great scholars that should have known him said, this man is Beelzebub. We'll not have this man rule over us and so forth, see. We'll not do it. But a little old prostitute with a life in her, predestinated to eternal life, and her name is immortal in the Word of God here. Walked up there, and the first time that light struck that little seed, quickly she noted. Amen. Look at the old fisherman come by there. Here he stood there doing signs and wonders and, and telling different people the secrets of their hearts and revealing himself. And my, there was Pharisees standing there and said, This man is Beelzebub. They had to answer to the congregation. All of them standing there. Dr. Jones, will you go down and listen to this man? He, he seems like he knows what he's talking about. He don't talk like ordinary men. I was hearing Walk down there, Stephen. God, God can never get to him. Amen. And there he stood down there and said, they said, oh, look at there. Look at there. There comes a the man there. There's one of his disciples. There comes a the man up. Now, now, that's God's name. Uh, that's Andrew. You remember? Oh, you remember the old, uh, uh, the old fisherman's down here? That's Sam. Yeah, that, that's Simon, his brother, see? And that's, that's old Jonas's kids. Now, there they, look, he's, he's bringing somebody up to him. Who is it? Yeah. See what he'll do now. He's, he's the next up there. And he walks up and said to him, your name is Simon, and you are the son of Jonas. Amen. This man is Beelzebub. See, he's got some kind of spirit on him. He's an odd fellow. See, swear, don't, don't you all listen to nothing like that. See, keep awake now. I wouldn't attend any more of these meetings at all. See, as soon as this thing's over, we'll get out of here. Yeah. We'll never get away from right here again. See, wow. Now that's what he thought, and yet was supposed to be the one. Look, the very ones that he come to was the ones who crucified him. But there's a little prostitute that everybody kicked out. Amen. I'm not endorsing prostitution. No, indeed. But I'm just showing you that predestinated seed. Amen. Look at this guy here, this old fisherman. Good. Now, he, the Bible said he was unlearned. Is that right? Amen. Not only that, but he was ignorant. Amen. <laughs> now, is that right or wrong? Amen. Amen. Oh, we can just get ignorant. <laughs> to a lot of these things that we think we know. Amen. All right, see, he was both ignorant and unlearned. And then he walked up there in the presence of the Lord Jesus, and he told him he was, right then that settled it. Now, what's this other fellow's argument against that? Well, look, he believed it. Look who it is. You know who that is? Well, that man never, why, why he's a fisherman. Why well, he don't know his ABC. I bought fish from him. He couldn't even sign me a receipt. That, see, that's the kind of stuff, that's the kind of people that listen to something like that. Thank the Lord. Amen. Well, 
Well, you don't. Look at his dad. He's ignorant. He didn't even send him to school. But that's the one he sent to school. Yeah. Thought the way he wanted to I'm not supporting not going to school now. I hope you understand. But that's just the type. See, what you get in that. That's the kind of uh, reason it goes over the top of them. And you know what? Not one, I'd say not one third of all the Jews in the land ever know anything about him coming. And, and then one, one fifth of the one third listen to him. And then one hundredth of the one fifth received it. You know how many he had? He had twelve standing at the cross out of the whole bunch. Where's the rest of it? The seventy went away. Now while he was healing the sick and just going down, not saying nothing about his doctrine, he just went ahead healing the sick and everything. Oh my! That's God's spirit on him. You believe that? When he was healing the sick, wonderful. That's a great rabbi. Say, hey, brethren, you are him in your church, boy. You talk about power. That guy can really heal the sick. Yours, he's got a gift of healing. Well, of course, they're going to ask him impersonations. Here they come along because each group's got to have his own name. Here he comes. And then the first thing you know, one day he sat down. Oh, sure, Rabbi, we'll go with you. All right, sit down. Let's go. All right, he sent out the 70 and so forth. And one day, after a great miracle was done, he sat down and began to tell him the word. Okay. At the beginning of the sounding of the... All right. He began to tell him the word, the truth. Ah, oh, now wait a minute. I don't know about this. It's contrary to their doctrine. Say, well... I know we left the synagogue and everything like that, but maybe we was wrong, brother. We better go back, because that man talks in riddles. He's kind of an odd fellow. I can't understand that. See, why was it? The seed wasn't predestined. Yeah. Yeah. Start. Then the first thing you know, he had a little ministerial group and talked to the ministers. They said, ah, hmm. We better go back to it and go back and get the organization, take up our papers again. See, go, this guy, well, who can understand a man like that? He says this year and says this over here. Uh, then others didn't understand it like that. Yeah. <laughs> he was showing riddles to some of them, but not to the others. Yeah. So they walked away. Amen. Then he turned around and looked at 12, and I said, you want to go too? Hmm? Now watch. Hallelujah. Peter said, you know what? I attended that old place all that time. Where in the world would I go to? <laughs> Where would I go? Where, where could I go? After I've done a year of work, uh, I can't go back to that garbage can. <laughs> we're all kind of the slop of the world's laying in it. I, I, where will I go to? I, I just can't do it. He said, then, all right, come on, go along. <laughs> so there you are. See, how was that then? Twelve out of about two and a half million. And to save the world out of billions, get humble. See, just stay humble. Watch now, with all them Pharisees and that little prostitute come up there, she said, Stay, you must be a prophet. Now, we know that Messiah is coming. When he comes, he'll do that. He said, I'm he. She said, That's it. <laughs> the way she went. You tried to stop her once. She couldn't do it. Brother Bram, greetings in the name of, of the Lord Jesus. Please explain who the man in Matthew 22, 11, the man that didn't have on a wedding garment, wedding garment on, I know this man... Could, couldn't get into heaven without the wedding garment on. This was a guest, I know, not the bride. Yes, that's right. He would be a guest. Yeah, he just slipped in. See? Now look. Now, I did take a whole sermon on that. Now I got ten minutes to pray for the sick and finish this up. And I've got one half of them done. No, but I'm, I'm going to hurry right sure enough after this. Here's what happened. If you know the Oriental customs, see, when a bridegroom gives out invitations for his wedding, he just gives out so many invitations. And for every invitation he sent, he had a porter stand at the door to put a robe on him, whether he was poor or whatever he was, he had, if he was rich or poor or whatever it was, he all had to wear this wedding garment. When they stood at the door, they put this on him. They covered up what he's outside the bin. He's invited. Where's the millionaire? Where's the parker? Where's the farmer, ditch digger, whatever he is, or, or plutocrat? He's, he's here with the robe on. Now, because the robe's put on him at the door when he enters in at the door. Now, I take St. John 10, I believe it is. He said, I am the door. See? 
I am the door that enter, she enter in by. Now there he stands at the door, and here's the man to put the robe on the Holy Spirit, to give him the robe of righteousness when he comes in. Now this man had come by some organization, back at the window over here, some slip-in hole, and he got into the table and sat down. And then when the bridegroom comes up and looks around, he's a, he these have been odd ducks before, now he's the odd duck. <laughs> What you doing here like that without the baptism of the Holy Ghost and all these things? How did you ever get in here? Well, uh, he come in somewhere besides the door, and he come without the proper invitation. See? He come by some educational system. See? Or something like that. He got in, and he said to him, Find him, hand and feet. Cast him out of here. In the outer darkness. Where there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. He went into the tribulation period. He did not come in by the door. So, all right. Question. Will the Elijah of Malachi 4 be the same as Elijah mentioned in Revelation 11, 3? And is the other witnesses, uh, is the other two witnesses separate, uh, individuals separate? Yes. The Elijah of Malachi 4 will not be the Elijah of Malachi 3. We went through that last night. And is the other witness separate? Two of them. Yes, sir. Moses and Elijah to our revelation. Now, I don't want to hold you here too long. 1 Kings 19. Brother Brandon, I believe that the number who did not bow the knee was... Se- yeah, that's right. 700. Instead of- Thank you. That's correct. It was 700 instead of 7,000. Brother, 7,700. I see that? You know, really, when a person comes like this to, to preach, I want to ask you something. That's what you'll understand. When the Elijah came from the wilderness, he had one message. He stomped out of that wilderness and come right down and told that king that you will not even fall from heaven till I call for it. That's the words he had and stomped right back out and said up into nobody. Amen. Amen. When he had another message, he come right down and said this message and turned right back around and went back out into the wilderness. Amen. See? Right. Now, if you watch, when I laid the cornerstone in that tabernacle, he said, do the work of an evangelist. And now the hour is coming when that work is separated. Amen. There's something else taking place. Amen. Amen. Then I'm so See, I get here and try to do evangelists and something else and see where you're at. Yeah. See, you're all... I, I'm expecting the church to be spiritual enough Amen. to understand. Amen. 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 Brother Branham, I understand that Elias must be three times. You tell us that he has been twice already and will come again. Now, will the person that the spirit of Elias will be upon also be of the two witnesses of Moses and Elias? Or no. No. He will be a Gentile. See, to the Gentile church, God sends always to his own people. See, He came to his own, his own receipt. And he always sends his, the message of the hour. When God was dealing with the Jews, there wasn't any Gentile prophets come. When God's dealing with the Gentiles, there's no Jewish prophets. When God turns back to the Jews, there'll be no Gentile prophets. See, See what I mean? Yeah. All right. After the rapture has taken place, uh, there will be a carryover time. Of course, one message carrying to the other, and it, it, it has to come out in like this. You see, that I explain that. See, like Paul to the Gentiles and so forth. All right. After the rapture has been taken place, will any of the church be saved in the end who was not uh, taken in the rapture. No. Uh-uh, because the blood's done left. You see, there'll be no intercession. The Gentile age is finished. There'll be no one saved at the rapture of the church. Uh-uh. The church, let him as filthy be filthy still, him as holy be holy still. That won't take place. Not after the church is gone. Brother Branham, I notice you, you're referring to Daniel 70 weeks on the first seal message. I understand... On Daniel, on the tape of Daniel, when the gospel returns to the Jews, the 70 weeks will begin. Is there a one, 70, uh, one week, seven years left for the Jews, or 
yet is there only one half week, one, three and a half years left for them. Only one half week. Jesus prophesied the first half week, as was predicted. Only one half week left for them. Brother Bam, since you didn't pray for the sick during the week, will you that's just a request for that? Brother Branham, will you see me after the that's a request see that. Would you uh, please explain about Satan being bound a thousand years and being loose for the battle of battle of Revelation twenty eight? What relationship does this have with the battle of Armageddon, uh, as mentioned in the fourth seal? Will Gog and Magog be gathered from the people of the new earth? Well. This is a long one, and I, I just have to hit the spot. Of it. See, uh, the first thing, will uh, maybe I can't explain it. I'll do my best. Will you please explain how Satan is bound a thousand years, being loosed again for the battle of Revelations 20 and 8? That is not the battle of Armageddon. The battle of Armageddon takes place on this side. See? All right. At, uh, when the tribulation period is in. Now, uh, what relation does this have with the battle of Gog and Magog? None. One is this thousand years and the other is the end of the, end of the thousand years. Um, as mentioned in the fourth seal, will Gog, and, will Gog and Magog be gathered from peoples on the new earth? Satan was loosed out of his prison and went to gather all the people, the wicked, to bring them